Welcome TaylorMade officials and basketball officials around the world. It's me, Ken Thomas, a.k.a. Mr. Smooth, again bringing you another video to help all of you guys with your development as a referee. In this video, we will be talking about basket interference, goaltending, player technical fouls, and the mechanics and the rules pertaining to all of these rules that in regards to this play. So with that said, we're going to have a, a shot at the basket. A player is going to attempt to block the shot, and as they attempt it, they will make contact with the backboard. So I want, I'm going to start the video. Let's see what happens. So as you can see, the lead official signaled basket interference or goaltending and scored the basket. And it's going to give the ball to other teams to resume play. So a couple of things I want to talk about. I want to talk about the rules and the mechanics. The first I'm going to start with is the rule. So I'm going to read you the rule to basket interference that could be found in our rule books. Rule 4, section 6. So I'm going to go ahead and read it for you. Basketball interference occurs when a player touches the ball or any part of the basket, including the net. I would like to note that the backboard isn't considered the basket. So I'll continue reading the rule. While the, while the ball is on or within either basket. Touches the ball while any part of the ball is within the imaginary cylinder which has the basket ring as its lower base. Touches the ball outside the cylinder while reaching through the bottom of the basket from below. Pulls down a movable ring so that it contacts the ball before the ring returns to its original position. So from what we saw during this play and I will rewind it after I read all the rules so you can see it again. But the ring wasn't touched, the net wasn't touched, and the ball wasn't touched. So we can't have basket interference. So the next rule I'm going to read to you is goaltending. Goaltending occurs when a player touches the ball during a field goal, try, or tap while the ball is in its downward flight entirely above the basket ring level. Has the possibility of entering the basket in flight and is not touching the basket cylinder or a player touches the ball outside the cylinder during a free throw attempt. So as you can see, the ball wasn't touched. So we can't have goaltending. So the next part I'm going to read is player technical fouls. You can find this on Rule 10, Section 4. And it says in Article 4, illegally contact the backboard slash ring by placing a hand on the backboard or ring to gain an advantage, intentionally slapping or striking the backboard, or causing the ring to vibrate while a try or tap is in flight or touching the backboard or is in the basket or in the cylinder above the basket. So we may have something there because the player did touch the backboard. So now since the player touched the backboard, as officials, we got to decide is if that contacting of the backboard was illegal. So for that contact to be illegal, it has to be intentionally intentionally done, causing the, or it causes the ring to vibrate, or if the offer is used to gain an advantage. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and replay it one more time. I'm gonna replay it in slow motion as well. So let me go ahead and back it up for you. Go ahead, JD, start it for me in slow motion. So as you can see, the player did touch the backboard, but it wasn't intentional because he was trying to legitimately block a shot. And two, it didn't cause the ring to vibrate. So we don't have a player technical foul. So the next thing I want to go over 
are the proper mechanics when calling goaltending basket interference or any play that's above the rim. In two-person mechanics, since this is a two-person game, it's important to note that our lead, when our lead official is set up behind the end line here, they shouldn't be making calls that's above the rim. That should be left to whoever our trail official out here as they have the best look to see if it's goaltending, basket interference, or what may be whatever occurs at the rim. But when you're the lead, you're out of bounds behind the end line, you don't have the angle, so you don't have the best look. Our trail would have the best look at the play. The only time a lead would maybe potentially call a basket interference is say they're on the fast break and we have a play at the rim. Since our lead isn't behind the end line, they would then have the best look at the rim because they don't because it's a fast break our trails in the backcourt and our lead would have the best look so they could potentially make that call so in this situation for this play if we would ask our trail official why they didn't call basket interference or a player technical foul they would say because the it's not basket interference because the ball was in touch or the rim was in touch and the slapping of the backboard wasn't illegal contact. So again, if this was a close game, let's say 80 to 81 high school division one boys finals and our lead makes that call and those two points that we would have gave the other team or whatever the situation is, we may be affecting the outcome of the game if we're not applying the rules properly. So that's why it's important to know the rules, apply them properly, because you never know when your call could be the difference in the team having the opportunity to win a game or not. So I'm going to close with that. Again, if you're watching this video, please like the video, comment on the video if you can, share the video. It will help our page grow. So that's why I need you guys to donate some likes. Likes are free. Again, get the likes up. We need the likes. Don't Likes are free. You don't have to give us any money. All you got to do is hit the thumbs up button for us. And that's greatly appreciated. So again, Ken Thomas, a.k.a. Mr. Smooth, signing off. Enjoy your time on the basketball court. Officiating these games. Have fun. Peace out.